Shalom, Israel, scattered to the four corners of this earth. We give all praises and glory to the Almighty. This is a much needed topic, and this is going to hit home for many of you, but for some of you, not in such a good way. Listen here, Zion. We have lost our way as a people. And it's gotten so bad that some of you think that we're going forward, when in reality, we have gone so far backwards. Now, y'all tell me this. How did we go from strong Israelite black fathers in the home, teaching and raising their kids and supporting their wives? How did we go from strong black Israelite fathers being the spiritual head and being the leaders of their households to going to infeminate mama boys, homosexuals? How did we go from strong black Israelite women teaching their daughters how to be women to going to single raising parent mothers baby mama mothers to lesbians. How did we get to this point? How did we go from strong black Israelite communities where the neighborhood doctor was Israel, where the neighborhood nurse was Israel, where the neighborhood dentist was Israel, just your neighborhood practitioner was Israel. Everything was Israel. So how do we go from these strong families to a broken monopoly of mixing and diverging into all kinds of manner of wickedness? How do we go from there to here? Well, I'm going to tell you how we got from there to here. I don't think you're ready to hear the answer, Israel. Are you sure? Because the answer is going to be so profound that it's going to blow your mind. I mean, it's going to be so simple that you're going to be like, wow, how come I didn't think about this? That was kind of supposed to be a joke. But let me give you the answer. The answer is simple. It's because we played the harlot and tampered and mixed with the serpent seed and accepted all of their ways and traditions. That's how we got from there to here. I bet your minds are absolutely cotton picking blown right now. You want to know something crazy, Israel? This is not far fetched because this is not the first time this has happened to us. We've done this before many times over, but I'm going to show you an account where this actually happened. You know, I will admit that this current day that we're in is the worst that has ever been in the history of Israelites being a nation. It is the worst that has ever been as far as us going completely backwards and mixing and doing all the ways of the serpent seed. But let's go there. All right, go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Maccabees chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 11. By the end of this lesson, you all are going to see how vital and important it is to completely separate yourselves from the serpent seed. It's an absolute must in all form and fashion. So let's start with verse 11. It says, in those days when they're out, Yasharal, wicked men. Who are these wicked men that it's talking about? It's talking about our people. You guessed it. It said, in those days when they're out of Yasharal, wicked men who persuaded many. Now, let me just stop right here for a minute because I want you to see the gravity of this. It says persuaded many. Now, let's fast forward. We have roughly, just in America alone, we have roughly 40 to 42 million so-called, as they call it, African-Americans. I'll call them Israel, all right? So let's just say 42 um, Israelites that are in the U.S., whether they sleep or walk. Now, 
they persuaded many. So think of our so-called leaders that are at the Pentagon, that are at the White House, your what you call the, the Black Caucus and, and your other civil rights leaders. Now, you think of the same thing, how they persuaded these, our enemies, our enemies, the serpent seed, to cling to them and to persuade them to sell us out. Y'all see how similar y'all see how similar these these events are? In the Maccabees, we read this, and then here you fast forward now, it's the same thing, y'all. I mean, it's crazy. Alright? So let's let's continue. Who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and cut a covenant. Now y'all know what a covenant is. A covenant is a an agreement, a promised agreement. And so our forefathers of that time cut a covenant with the serpent seed, our enemies, and made a covenant. I don't think I realized how crazy and scary this is to do that. And this is why we, you know, we've been set back so many times because our people constantly cutting, cutting covenants with their enemies. And y'all know how we were sold out constantly ever since we got off these boats. We've been sold out by our so-called prominent black leaders. It never fails. And we keep falling for the same stuff. That's why I put in the beginning of the, definite, the definition of insanity. Repeating the same things over and over while expecting different results. It's not going to happen. We got to break out of this habit. We're going to have to break out and separate ASAP from our enemies. It's plain and simple. All right. So it goes on to say, let us go and cut a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. Is it not the same thing today? Are we not surrounded by our enemies? Absolutely. We were scattered to the four corners of the earth. So we there's nothing but the serpent seed around us. So let us go cut a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. Now watch this. This is still verse 11. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Don't you just want to just slap the hell out of our people? I mean, that's crazy. You know, you know what they're saying. So basically what they said is that we cannot live without the serpent seed around us. We love their ways. We love being around them. We love immersing with them. It's the same thing today. I guarantee you, a lot of our people, when you, I bet you if they were questioned to see how long could they live without their enemies, without white people on this earth, do you know that they would curse you out? They would call you racist, your own people, because you're excluding them. See, this is how integrated we've become. This is how power, this is how powerful that we've been hit with the spirit of inclusion. It's gotten so bad that we can't even picture ourselves living, not living amongst them. That's sad. That's that's mental illness at its highest, y'all. And if there's nothing sicker than that, then I don't know what is. All right, this, this thing is crazy. And verse 12, let's look at verse 12. It says, so this device pleased them well. So when our black leaders, so-called black leaders, sold us out, this pleased everybody when they convinced Martin Luther King to go the gentle route and not follow the ways of Malcolm X because, see, Malcolm X ways, his ways were trying to separate us from our enemies. No, they wanted to join with our enemies. So Martin Luther King was the best candidate for that until he realized it was too late. But it didn't matter because the damage was already done. Y'all see where I'm going with this? I hope y'all really see this because this thing is so simple, but it's so it's so profound because our people are just hit with the spirit of inclusion and don't even realize it. That's the scary thing. And the sad part about it, I'm even seeing we, we know the camps do it all the time. The camps been preaching inclusion with the other other nations. They do it all the time. So, you know, camps are a lost cause. So I don't even look at that. Look at them as one body of Israel. I treat them just like I treat the heathens. 
because all they're doing is teaching the same thing that heathens are teaching. That's it. The spirit of inclusion. And I'm seeing a lot of other Israelite, so-called Israelite organizations, too, that's also allowing the serpent seed to in intermingle with them. But I'm just telling you because that's how prevalent it is. See, our people cannot go five minutes without the sight of their enemies. That's how delusional we have become. To even imagine a so-called black utopia would even be considered racist amongst our people because we are so heavily hit with the spirit of inclusion that we cannot even think about a black utopia. There is no way it's impossible to see ourselves as a people, as a power, and as a unit without the serpent seed being mixed in there some kind of way. That's how bad it is. All right, so let's look at verse 13 of 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Y'all hear that? License to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Now, this is going to explain it in the next verse, what that's talking about. Verse 14. It says, Whereupon they built a place of exercise. What does it mean to exercise something? That means to practice it. So whereupon, verse 14, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Yasharalim. Now get this. When they practice something, you know, that means they're going to continue to do it. So it says, well, right, I'm going to read that again. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Yerushalayim according to the customs. Wow. According to the customs. What are customs, y'all? Customs are practices. Other nations have customs that they practice. And it says, according to the customs of the heathen. All right, now y'all know that this has already opened up a can of worms because y'all already know where I'm going with this now. So that means that everything that the Greeks and the other heathens were practicing, our people were joining in with them. Doesn't that sound so familiar? Fast forward today. You got your pagan hella days. Y'all know what they are, all your pagan hella days throughout the year. And you look how our people, they, they, would, they would even try to outdo the heathens, outdo the serpent seed and trying to keep not their holy days, that the, the, the days that the Most High has given us, but someone else's holy days. That's that's crazy, y'all. And y'all know how insane that, that is to keep other nations' hella days. And you totally ignore the Most High's feast days and his, and his holy days. But yet you will break your necks trying to keep the serpent seeds of hella days. And you would be so proud of it. You would slurp that stuff down like gravy on rice. And the customs and the ways of the serpent seed will have you swinging on a pole like a hooker in a whorehouse. And you'll be enjoying every bit of it. You know, what's so funny. You know, I've had quite a few brothers that came to me with their situation as far as them marrying a serpent seed and having children by them or not not even marrying a serpent seed and just still having children by them that seems to be the norm of our people but the question that I always get is what can i do you know i didn't know about this truth before this happened and now i know i feel bad and what have you well let me say this and this is the first thing i challenge people with especially our people why is it that every practically every nation on this flat earth deals with their own people, especially the Asians. The Asians are probably, in my opinion, the strongest family believing people of their own people. All right. Of course, whites, for the most part, they, you know, the serpent seed, they stick with. And when I say serpent seed, I'm talking about the non melanatives. All right. All the non melanatives. Whether y'all want to debate me on that or whatever, you know, I don't, it don't doesn't, doesn't matter. But there were no melanated people when the Most High created Adam on this earth. Now, I can argue that. That's been a proven fact. So somewhere down the line, they came in. But getting back to this is that a lot of times I challenge our people, 
Why is it that every nation can stick with their own people but us? Why is it that we are the only so-called race or group of people that for some reason just have to go out and marry the serpent seed? Why is it that we cannot stick with our own? Well, we know that this goes all the way back to slavery, but even further than that, because our people were doing it before, every time the Most High rose us up as a people, for some reason, we started to lose our way. We started to lust after other flesh. And the next thing you know, we're serving their idols and doing everything that the heathens are doing. And this is where we always go wrong. I don't know what it is. If we're just born a, if we just born to be a home born slave or what, you know, it just seems like we just, we don't get it. I know, you know, goodness, I get it. We're, we're stiff necked people, but it's like the same things over and over. Something is going to have to give. All right. And this is why I named the title the way I did. Our people must absolutely separate themselves in all forms and fashions from the serpent seed, period. If you don't, it's going to be too late. So there's no excuse. So, you know, you brothers and sisters coming up to me with these past relationships, you had children by the serpent seed. There's, I can't, I can't have pity for you. I can't feel sorry for you because the truth is the truth. Did we not learn from our grandparents to stick with our own? Do we not know this common sense? I mean, what else do we need? You know, what, a sledgehammer to the back of the head or something to make us to understand? I mean, I just, I, I just don't get it. And, you know, we do it because, let's admit it, because of self-hate. We have been taught to hate ourselves so much that we can't even see our own, we can't even see our own melanin as power. We can't see it because we've been so brainwashed to believe that, the lighter you are, the better you are. So our people go and they have babies with the serpent seed that don't look nothing like them because they hate the way they look. And that's just, hey, if you don't like what I'm saying, I'm, nobody's forcing you to be here. You know, y'all know, y'all know how I get down. I don't do this for money. I don't ask for no charities. I don't have no PayPal's and, and uh, cash apps. On my page, y'all know y'all know the rules. Y'all know how, how I do. So hey, I'm not I'm not about views. Now let's look at the nail in the coffin of our people back in those days, as well as these current days. Verse 15, still in First Maccabees chapter one, and we're at verse 15, and it says, "And made themselves uncircumcised, and forsook." Y'all hear that? And forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Let me read that again because you're going to have to understand that. And I'm going to give you the main bullet and the reason why we must separate from the serpent seed ASAP as soon as possible. All right. Read that again. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So that means that everything that the heathens, the serpent seed were doing, our people were doing it. Fast forward today. Same thing. All right. So why is it so vital that our people must separate from the serpent seed? Well, what happens when we begin to become like our enemies? We start to take on their customs and their ways. Simple as that. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. This happens over a period of time. Now, remember in the beginning, I said, how do we go from strong black families in the communities to broken homes and separated men and women and just warn against one another and all kinds of chaos. How did we go from strong black Israelite families to just complete uh, confusion? Because we started to adapt the ways, we started to accept the ways of the serpent seed, therefore causing us over time to degenerate. That's right, I said degenerate. Degenerate is a process that takes 
over time. It doesn't happen overnight. So roughly 70 to 80 years in the making to where we are now. That's what it took to completely destroy our people. Because remember, the Most High says that he, in Deuteronomy, he will put a yoke of iron upon our necks until we are destroyed. We are not completely destroyed yet. And so the many of our people who are destroyed, they're going to continue to be destroyed. Now, we're not talking about the remnant. We're talking about the majority. The majority of our people who will not heed to the Most High. And we know that we're going to have to continue to go through these things. And I know some of you all are tired and are sick of tired of being tired. But this is what we're dealing with. This, we brought this on ourselves. All right. So what else happens? And the reason why we need to separate from the serpent seed. Well, we become too accustomed to them. We become too insensitive. We become to take on their ways and we become just like them. Let me give you an example. You know, growing up, in the 60s, 70s, you know, and most of y'all who are older than I am, grew up before that, you know that homosexuality and lesbianism were not our thing. That was never us. We were never a greedy people running after money constantly all the time. We were never like that. You see what I'm saying? We picked those ways up from the serpent seed. We picked all of those ways up. And gradually over time, they crept on us. And we began to show a degenerate, a digress, you know, and we started going backwards because we were a lot stronger back in the 50s, back in the 60s, and even in the 70s. And we're so integrated with the with the serpent seed is that when we and then when we send our children to their private schools and then when our when our children are called niggers and all kinds of by words, then you get mad and. Oh, it's like 2022. Why this is still happening? Y'all act like y'all are so surprised that these people are being racist. They're only being what they're supposed to be. You know, we're the ones that always fortune ourselves upon our enemies. We're the ones who are constantly trying to get up in there in the crevices of their butts. And for some reason, we love it there. We want to stay there. We don't want to leave. We've gotten so comfortable in that position. We can't even see ourselves five minutes without being with our enemies. I mean, it's ridiculous. And what's so crazy is that many of you all are so surprised and devastated with the treatment of a lot of uh, the Africans over there. Because a lot of them, some of them are our people too. So you can't classify them as Hamites because we have a lot of people mixed in with Hamites. So yes. There's lots of our people that are over there in Ukraine. And, you know, some of y'all were acting all surprised like, man, Ukraine is so racist. They're treating our people like this and they're doing them wrong. Well, why are y'all surprised? That's what, I, that's what I don't understand why our people always act surprised when something like this happens. You know, that's what, they, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to take care of their own people. Why, why, why would you think that they're going to take care of our people that are over there? See, this is what we re need to realize. And this is why the spirit of inclusion on us is so devastating because we always think that other nations are supposed to take care of us. And that's our problem. We always, we always sit around and wait for them to do something. Well, we don't have no black movies. You, you waiting on them to make some black movies in Hollywood? If they do make some black movies in Hollywood, it's going to be about slavery. It's going to be, you know, they're going to throw some homosexuality in there, some lesbianism in there. You know how they roll. You know, if we're going to do it, it's time to do it ourselves. We can't sit around and, and wait for our enemy to do stuff for us. That's so played out, y'all. But our people are still doing it. And this so-called black caucus they got at the White House is a joke. They need to line all of them up on a firing line and just kill them all off. That's what they need to do because that's the only thing that they're good for is death. The only thing that these black so-called black politicians are doing is keeping our people in slavery and in bondage that's it that's the only thing that they're doing for our people and after seeing all the mistreatment of our people in ukraine you still got so-called black churches praying for these people and they ain't praying for our people they're praying for the ukrainians the so-called kazarians that are over there trying to rise up and see, let Russia, let Russia and Ukraine fight their own battles. This has nothing to do with us. 
But you know, our people just hit with the spirit of inclusion. They just feel like they just got to include everybody but their own people. And that's what I mean, why we need to separate from the serpent seed ASAP. Because it's not doing us any good remaining amongst them. And you see the ways and the customs that we've had adapted as a people. We have completely saturated ourselves amongst the serpent seed. And really, there's no turning back. So yes, a lot of our people are going to have to be destroyed. But the ones who are faithful to the Most High, the ones who keep it real, who want to keep it all Israel, all Negro, those are the ones of us that are going to catch hell. But you know what? I'd rather catch hell for the truth than burn for compromising. That's right. It's time to stop compromising and stick to our guns. And realize who true Israel is. And stop immersing ourselves with our enemy. Plain and simple. It's not hard to do, y'all. We just got to train our minds to do it. That's all. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some time. And I know that's hard for a lot of our people to do. Because they can't see themselves living without the serpent seed. It's almost impossible in their minds. But it can be done. You have to think a certain way. You're going to have to think royalty. The word says that we are above these people. We're not beneath them. We're not equal to them. We're above them. So look, y'all, we need to start getting back to loving our own people. We need to start focusing on our own people, supporting our own people. Plain and simple. And the only way that we're going to correct this thing is that we're going to have to hold our people accountable. Because before they can even begin to keep the laws, commandments and statutes, they're going to have to wake up some kind of way. They're going to have to come to some kind of knowledge because as long as they're hit with the spirit of inclusion, they're not going to see it. Something's going to have to snap them out of it. And, you know, and the Most High has a chain of events that are happening and hopefully it snaps them out of it. But we got to get out of that, y'all. There were no serpent seed, no non-melanated people upon this face of this earth. In the beginning, they wouldn't have been able to survive anyway. So, brothers and sisters, this is a must. We must absolutely start training our mind to separate ourselves from the serpent seed. And if you don't see how vital this is and how important it is, then you will never see it. You will continue to make excuses to have babies with the serpent seed and then justify your half serpent seed children which are not Israelites. All right, the word is the word, y'all. You can't make this stuff up. So I pray that you take heed to this. I pray that you will see the light before it's too late. Because at the end of the day, we all have to answer to the Most High. And what we do and how we do it, it's going to be all up to you. So with that being said, I pray that you are edified and I say shalom and stay strong.